Let me get to the markets. Uh, we're pretty much flat this morning, but David Barnson's with us. He's the Barnson Group CIO. David, you told us, I don't know when it was, it was about a month ago, get out there and put your money into some Exxon and into Chevron. You were dead right, because you said that when Exxon was around 77, I think, mm. and now it's low 80s, is it? I said on your show at 77, we started buying it heavily at 72, and now it's sitting in the low 80s. Yep. Chev Chevron has moved up even further, and I want to add to it, the oil and gas pipelines are up 16% in the last month as well, not so counting their big dividend. You're playing the energy market. You're but, playing the run-up in the price of oil. And presumably you expect oil to stay in the 70 almost $80 range. Um, I don't expect that. I do expect it will, but I don't care if it does or not. In other words, I, I'm very bullish on these names if oil were to drop in the 60s, move up in the 80s, particularly on the pipeline side, by the way, we're agnostic about the oil price. We think it's, first of all, more of a natural gas play. But what it is is the volume. The American producers are producing so much. The Trump administration is putting a lot of regulatory relief on, and they don't have the pipelines to move it. So you look at the oil price, it is right now 15% lower in the Permian Basin because they don't have enough pipelines to move the oil downstream. Per the Permian Basin is a giant oil lake under the ground yeah, in 40, West Texas. percent of rigs are in the Permian Basin. And they've got the oil, they can get it out, but they can't get it they to market. They can't move it, so they've got to put it on trucks, which cost a lot more money. Give me the name of an, a pipeline company which is primed to exploit the situation. Uh, most definitely Enterprise Products, ticker EPD, is primed to exploit the situation, both Permian and also the whole natural gas story, being able to export natural gas. We also like just sort of buying a basket of the names to get some diversification, but they're a great, great name. And I take it you already own EPD. Yes, we do. You got it. Okay. Now, the other story on the market is rising interest rates. Mm -hmm. We're at 3.1%, roughly speaking, right now on the 10-year Treasury. Yeah. That doesn't seem to me to be a big problem, because yeah. I remember the days when it was about 15, 16, 17%. Mm -hmm. Is it a problem for you? Well, let, let me say two things. It's definitely not a problem, but I also don't like the analogy to what it used to be in the late 70s, because there was an entirely different P.E. ratio in the market. There was an entirely, you know, you had a 15 percent interest rate, but you had a market trading at seven or eight times earnings. Right now we're trading at 16, 17 times. So a much higher interest rate would be problematic for stock market earnings. The difference is that I don't think we're going to a much higher interest rate. Nobody can come up with any rationale why it would. Slightly higher. We've moved from two and a half to three because we have great economic growth. But are we in facing inflationary pressures like what we're talking about back when rates were that high? Not even close to it. The disinflationary forces are alive and well. And I think that effectively you're going to see rates, maybe they get up to three and a half. I don't really think they will. Three and a quarter, very possible. But there's some sort of spot at which the market knows this is a healthy interest rate and much lower, as you say, than we're used to anyways. Sure. But I think right now the uncertainty around that creates higher volatility. That becomes opportunistic. The way around it, buying things like energy. If there's inflation, energy's doing well. And buying, I, I mentioned McDonald's a lot on your show. A company with great pricing power. It, they're raising prices. They're keeping up with it. If, in fact, there is that upward movement, that's the whole point. You can defend against it. And as investors, we get growing dividends. If you're stuck with a fixed rate, and inflation and interest rates are moving higher, you're hurting. We want to be able to grow with those rising rates. The articulate, the ever articulate David Barnson. No. Thanks for being with oh. us again. Coming from you. That's quite <laughs> it's a about time you moved out of California or New York. You've got to uh, do that. All right. Thank you, David.